Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Can you all hear me? Just let me know. I think I'm good. So is uh, everyone excited about spring? I am. <laughs> We're finally getting some warm weather. And that starts me thinking about plants and nature journaling, being outside, that type of thing. So I thought today I noticed on social media just lately it might have been out for quite a while but these reverse color books that people are starting to talk about so I went on Amazon and had a look at one and I thought we already have these <laughs> and they're all stuck in a drawer or in a little container you know those what uh, plastic containers you get at Michael's and they're full of either jelly prints or sprays that we've uh, put on our jelly plate and then smack some paper on and that type of thing just to make some backgrounds and then it's always so much fun and it's very addictive to do anything related to jelly printing and uh, we end up with hundreds <laughs> of these bits and then we have to figure out what do we do with them so I thought this is exactly what we need to do with them make our own color book so I thought I'd show you a few of my jelly prints that I have in my stash. And I'm sure you all have a ton of them in your stash too. Now they're all different. It all depends on how you jelly print. So this is one way of, this is actually a watercolor, just playing with my palette. Uh, nothing in mine. Hi, Tori. Good to see you. Um, just playing, basically. And then I love the colors, but what do we do with it? Not sure. And then we have different ones with uh, stencil in the background. This is a mix of stencil and botanical printing. So the the leaves were on the plate and therefore I uh, got a different background because the leaves were blocking this background and I think this one was done just to see what would happen when we all experiment this is probably a cleanup one so what do you do with it more botanical I have a lot of botanicals I'm a gardener and I love to do prints with uh, leaves and flowers and that type of thing. But yeah, what do we do with the sop up ones? <laughs> this one's actually still got leaf matter in there. It, it kind of got all uh, blotchy because it was very juicy. But we're going to play with that. And then this goes way back, way, way back, um, playing with shaving cream and I believe it was alcohol ink or a golden fluid acrylic. And then you get these really cool effects, but you can only use these for so many things and then you kind of run out of um, ideas but 
in the uh, reverse color book, the idea is to turn it around different angles and then try and see if you see anything in it and then do something with it. So you could uh, turn it around or if you like the background as that, you can also uh, just do some doodles on it. And then there's these. These are fun. These are just experiments on the jelly plate. Another one. More squished plants. another one a little bit too much water on this one so kind of just meld into each other hey Kim um, another one that was kind of over watered but could be something because not all your jelly prints or your uh, playing with work out a lot of them don't, and therefore you end up with all kinds of uh, different papers that are cool, but you're not sure what to do with it. Some of them are kind of ugly because you were experimenting with maybe different colors of paint that just didn't necessarily work out the way you thought it would. Um, these are kind of, uh, they've got a bit of, uh, gold in it. I do like these. I think these are really cool. These are with the, um, uh, golden fine, extra fine bronze paint and it separates and you get this kind of bluish color coming through. So depending on what you have on yours, maybe you don't use uh, any kind of pattern uh, like flowers, this type of thing. Maybe you're into the stenciling. Uh, there's different ways that you can play with that too. But I just thought I'd show you what I have. I have a lot of these because you always take a... Uh, um, an initial cleanup around the plants. So this pink was the cleanup. Okay. So I thought, well, what do we do with them? So I thought we could play with some of these and experiment, see what we can do with them. And uh, you never know. Yeah, some of them are really shimmery. And, of course, you can always draw right over top of this whole thing. Or if you um, can't figure what to do with it, then just throw a coat of gesso over it. Or cut it up. I would throw gesso over it and then reuse it myself. But, yeah. Now, I do have uh, some... Uh, Bombay black ink here and I pulled out a couple of my dip pens and those are just the uh, speedball dip pens sometimes it's kind of cool to play with dip pens on this type of thing because it uh, leaves you thin and thick lines depending on the nib that you have on your your pen so I thought what do we do with this so because this was a cleanup print, it could be uh, played with in many ways. And you don't have to get a dip pen. You can use uh, an ink pen if you wanted to. It's um, colored pencil, uh, marker, whatever. 
So let's play, see what we can do with this one here. I'll put these aside for now. So I, and if you've got any suggestions for me to try, just uh, put it in caps in chat. Or if you want me to do something uh, in another stream, leave a comment in the um, comment area down below. So I know I have leaves here. Sometimes I like to look at it in different ways and, and try and see maybe something else is forming in the in the white areas or the pink areas too, but the pink's pretty well flat. So now typically we, the easiest thing would be to draw the veins of the leaves and stuff like that. That's just a normal thing. So let's get this pen going. So let's do a little bit of this um, fern here. And you don't have to get really fussy. You could just ha doodle, have fun, put on some music. This is a very stress free way of um, being creative. I love it. And you don't have to be exact. It's just playing. Just getting out your drawing tools. Uh, whatever that may be. It doesn't have to be. We're not looking for perfection in this. We're just playing. I like ink on... Uh, done in this way. I think it looks cool. There'd be the nib or uh, very fine line of the vein here. And then maybe let's put a little, and I'm not going to do it all. I like it uh, when it's kind of half done. I think it's interesting. And it's very meditative. I don't know if you guys have tried this or not. Um, this is the simplest way of doing the reverse coloring pages. So if you have any of these, um, try it. Now, if, if you don't have any of this type of uh, gel print, botanical ones and you would like to try it let me know and I will uh, scan some of mine and I'll put it up in the in the um, description for you to download if you want after this uh, stream is done but you'll have to give me a uh, an hour or so to do that but let me know but it's fun these dip uh, pens are speed balls, so they're very inexpensive. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money on them. And like I said, you don't have to uh, use a dip pen. And I think it's it's it gives it a really cool look. And you can get uh, fatter or thinner, you know. Don't have to do them all. You just do a few. And I'm not even really paying attention to the line. But I, I like the look. I like the scratchy look of it. And this is Indian ink, so it'll be permanent once dry. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have uh, permanent ink, though, because I'm not going to be doing anything else but um, doing the line work on this one. So, you know, it's up to you. And 
Maybe we'll just put some lines in here. And like I said, you could do them all or uh, just do a few. Um, another thing you could um, do the veins of the leaves on the that one there or maybe you're seeing something else do you want it all to match or maybe in here let's put let's put a horizon line and I'm going to have a roadway going down here. And maybe we have some um, trees. Just doodle. It's fun too to do, um, what do you call it? Uh, contour drawing where you don't let your pen uh, leave the page. Try that. That's fun too. Hi, Sherry. Yeah. Yeah. Just get your stuff out pens, markers, whatever you got. I'm not worried about whether it's perfect or anything either. It's just to doodle. This one might be in front, so it might be a little bit bigger. Maybe this is a pathway. You could have you could have a little person walking. Maybe he has a dog with him or another person. Um birds flying grasses along the roadway and it's a path just have fun with it. Maybe there's a, a few uh, trees in the distance way back here. It's just a place to doodle and that's what those reverse uh, color pages are all about more more or less doodling on them you could use color uh, there's no wrong way of, of doing this really just it's just to relax and relieve your stressful day that Maybe a few more little shrubs or whatever 
these could be steps instead of the get your imagination going because you have to look for stuff that's what I like so maybe that's the riser So I'd be shaded. Step up from stone risers. You could use a real fine um, paintbrush too if you wanted to try that. Or you could even get paint out if you wanted to make it more um, colorful. You could do doodles. Uh, let's see. Let's say this one here. Let's make it um, some type of cool doodle. I'm not really a Zen tangler per se, but You could get into the Zen tangling. It's actually fun. It's very meditative. So if any of you um, tried this with your jelly prints, so now you know what it is. It's reverse color book uh, play. This is, if you're not used to a dip pen too, this is a great way to um, practice. So doodles, you could make, what else? Think of things that you would um, use your imagination. Uh, what else? Let's see, maybe this is a fish. So it kind of looks like a fish. Do all the scales on it. Do mermaids. I like finding things in uh, a lot of my stuff. I think it's fun. Uh, it, it's fun too because depending on what you were doing before you started, uh, usually will come through in what you see. So if you're um, 
drawing faces or portraits of uh, dogs or cats or anything like that, then you're going to usually see something that you're thinking about. I know when I was picking out these uh, pages, I did see a lot of flowers because <laughs> I'm thinking of spring. Let's see, just doodle, doodle on these. Yeah, the black, it looks really nice. I like it. And if you wanted to, you could get out some um, inks and make some, uh, like a light wash with it. So that would look cool too. It's endless, really, what you can do with it. Okay, let's try another one here and see what else we can dream up. Mm. Oh, here's a, here's a dark one, a black one. It's got a little bit of shimmer in this one, too. And it's got a lot of line work in it. And this is when I can see a lot more stuff. I can see a lot of faces in this. So I can see a cat's head here. There's the ears. Um, or it could be a face looking down. There's the chin. Let's see if I got, I know I have white ink somewhere. Where did I put it? That's black. Oh, I thought for sure I had it out. This one's heavy duty though. I did have Bombay white ink somewhere. Oh, maybe I put it in my thing. Let's see. Yep, there it is. Okay. White ink. So let's see what we can do with this one. Oh, I better shake this up a little bit. Sometimes the white ink uh, settles. I'll put a cap on that because knowing me, I'll end up spilling it. Okay, it's a little gloop goop. Oh, I wonder if it's any good. Let me shake it just a little bit longer. Kind of looks glump, gloppy. <laughs> now, if you have the white pens, you could use those too. I just thought I'd like to try and use the, the inks with a pen because they're sitting on my shelf. I don't know about you guys, but I got a lot of supplies that are just sitting there and that really bothers me. <laughs> yep, okay. So let's see, I see an eye here and right here and then I see a chin or a jawline right here and then her 
forehead. That. Uh, maybe she's, uh, I don't know, an elf of some sort. Surprise, surprise, eh? <laughs> I've been doing a lot of elf painting, too, and sketching. So that's on my mind. Oh, I do like this pen for white ink. How many of you use the darn pens and you get so frustrated with them? I... It drives me nuts when they don't work properly. I spoke too soon. Let's give her a pixie haircut. Okay. And do I see a sh uh, body on her at all? I don't know yet. But we can always make something up. Maybe she has messy hair. She's an elf or a pixie sprite. Um, use it or lose it. That's right, Kim. Yes, white pens are so frustrating. These are really nice. You know... It, and it's just sitting there. Okay, her nose would probably be right about there. And do I see anything else that I could put in here? Make her hair her like that. Um, maybe your shoulder. Goes across like that. I'm just making this up. Trying to get something. Okay, now I see it. Uh, we're going to bring her body. There's her waistline. She's very thin. Um, she's got a little bit of a turn on her. Maybe she's covering herself with leaves. She's trying to hide. I'm going to give her this little petals for her um, skirt. And yeah, let's put, I see some different lines in here. So let's do some leaves shapes. Try to follow some of these. So maybe the leaf comes down like this, kind of folds over. 
a little bit. <clears throat> and this one here, maybe. So I'm just playing with oop, whatever I see. in the uh, background. So maybe she's got uh, a bunch of leaves here. Or it could be I don't know, moss, wings, <laughs> whatever. But she's trying to cover herself. So her elbow would probably come out around there. Uh, let's see, her arm would come down like this. Maybe she's holding the... Uh, Just make it up as you go. <clears throat> so maybe let's put a center rib. I'm going to make this a leaf. Just play, have fun with it. That's the important thing. Even if you make mistakes, it's all about getting the ideas too. just to have fun. Um, let's just give her a leg there. Cute. Um, now she's a little off center, but that's fine. Maybe we'll add a little bodice on her. She's got a little Cute. Okay, so if her arm, let's see, I have this arm here. So this one would come across like that. Maybe she's holding it so I don't have to do hands. I don't feel like doing hands today. <laughs> so maybe she's just holding it there.
you could uh, make more um, you know more details or just do a very plain sketch doesn't have to be elaborate but it gives you starts get getting your imagination going so maybe we have I'm gonna have to do something with that blob so let's use some more sticks in here she's in the thicket and we could put I don't know all kinds of stuff do you see anything else maybe There's some trees. Do a creature. flying creature <laughs> give her big wings it's got little spots on them I guess they should have uh, six legs that oh, feet some kind of weird bug <laughs> that's cool so we could do well there's all kinds of uh, tree limbs in here hmm It's funny how sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Don't know if it's the... Ink starting to dry on the pen, maybe. Just following the lines I see. Maybe it's a bigger tree. I see little stars here. And just put these ones in. There's some more trees, maybe. I'll just throw in some branches and then we'll call it done. You can take your time and really go to town on it and make all kinds of stuff. I like to use it for you're in one of those slumps that you just don't know what to draw or paint or whatever it is. 
get one of these out and see what you can dream up with it. Isn't that cute? Just have some fun with it. You could use those for any kind of uh, journal page. You could add stuff to it. Let's see, what else do we got here? Um, that's another uh, plant one. Most of mine are plant ones. Let's see if I can find one that's not. We can pull stuff out of. Do I see? Okay, I kind of see this as an undersea. So we're going to get our, I'm going to just clean this up a bit. Get my black out again. Okay, right here, I kind of see a seahorse. No, I don't want that one. They're fun, <laughs> Tori. I don't know if you've ever done it before, but they are fun, I must admit. Get your imagination imagination going. So I see a little sea seahorse right here. I don't know if they all go. I know there's a fin on the front. And they have this big belly. There's his eye. And I think I don't have any references in front of me. So this is just made up. Don't know if what's on them. I think they have kind of uh, ribbing on their belly. Yeah, 
And then I see... Hmm, this could be a fish with a big nose. There's some really weird looking fish out there. Especially in the coral reef. Great big eye. We'll give him a bigger fin. And that. <laughs> what else? This kind of looks like a fish to me here, too. This little, this is his mouth. He's a big guy. Maybe, um, one of those, what are they called? Angelfish? Oh. Oh, darn. Oh, there's another one there. It's a community pool. <laughs> There's his. Let's see. Well, that'll. I know what we'll do. We'll make that part of his um, stripe. They usually have a stripe on them. So let's make that his stripe. And then we'll put, the, and a lot of times the stripe is part of the eye. It's really neat. They have, um, a lot of, uh, camouflage that you don't expect. Just give him a little highlight there. Like that. <laughs> That's cool. And then this could be seaweed. Same with this. This all could be seaweed. You could get in there with all kinds of textures or um, you could bring your paint back in. Let's see. Um, I think, don't they have, are kind of um, ribbed? I think they have these almost like armor <laughs> look to their their body this, well we'll continue it there he's slightly turned i guess If you wanted to, you could get out a reference photo if you wanted to really do an accurate um, 
painting of them. What else? Just make these. You don't have to follow the exact lines. A seaweed of some sort. fun. I can get lost doing this in my own creativity and hours can go by. And all of a sudden the puppies bring back my reality. <laughs> That is fun. I like using the dip pen. It's, it's fun because your lines aren't perfect. It gives you a really neat look. Oh, I just gave him a polka dot. Hmm. Can we fix that? Uh, maybe he has polka dots on him. He's one of those, uh, what do you call them? Um, trigger fish. Picasso trigger fish. <laughs> that's what I'm going to. That's what I'm going with. They do have some weird markings. A C word. <laughs> yeah. See, that's cool. Let's put that aside. See what else we got here. Put that back on just in case. Clean this off for a bit. see what else we got we'll we'll get out uh, maybe markers all right it's an odd shape here Could be uh what do I see? Oh there I see a fairy. 
with a, a weird hat. Those are her wings. Here's her um, arms. This is her dress. That's her head. Maybe she's caught. That's it. She got caught in the... <laughs> she got caught in the weeds. A lady in a bonnet. Yeah, kind of. So, and fairies can look really weird. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um... Let's see, this is some kind of bonnet of some sort. Fairies don't always have to be pretty. Some of them are kind of weird looking. And this we could add more maybe she, maybe it's we'll give her hair make this hair we'll make her too crazy looking she's wearing i don't know maybe an acorn hat or something And let's see, she's got strange wings. We could always take white. She's got funny wings. Um, let's see, her shoulder would be about here. If she's on an angle. Like that. Maybe this is her other, her that other arm or hand here. She's got maybe weird hands. I don't know. She's got claws as, or maybe she's part insect. There we go. Let's make her that part insect. She's got these funny hands. <laughs> Um, so these her, she's got strange looking uh, wings. So maybe, let's see. Half butterfly, half moth, maybe. Or half bee. Just play with it. Make stories up as you're doing it. That's the fun part. There's her dress. Um, Oh, 
Oh, I know what that is. That's her ear. That's what it is. It's her ear. She's got great big mouse ears. She's a real different one. <laughs> Scary fairies. She's, yeah, she's, she's a strange one. Who knows? We don't see them. <laughs> could be they disguise themselves when they're on plants and stuff okay now how did I do this should be the same but I'm not going to get too too caught up in it And then circle that. Yeah. Okay. And then hmm. maybe she's got well. What else should we put on her? I don't know where her legs are. Maybe she's squatty. Maybe she just has uh, little wee feet. Her feet would probably be in here. Like that. But this is how this is how you start getting ideas for drawings too. Uh, a lot of times, I will play with ideas by doing stuff like this to get ideas on what I like and what I don't like. But sometimes you can't think things up, and that's why it's good to find stuff like this so you can play with it. I think it's cool. And then, uh, yeah, she's hiding in the thicket there. <laughs> That's a cool one. All right. Um, we have this. This was a um, print from a hydrangea. And we could just, this could be really pretty by just adding a little bit of white. I kind of like it um, as it is. So we'll use our white. And I can see some of them, like they're right here. So just uh, outline bits of it, just to emphasize. A lot of times, I got a hair on there. A lot of times that's all what you need. Oh dear. Nope, it's not working. I think my ink is too old. It's thick. Yeah, it's not working. It's frustrating. Come on. I'm 
and shake it up. There's a rabbit in the center. Oh yeah, there's the eye. Good one, Tori. He's cute. See if I hope I can get this going again. Yeah, right here. There's this little. Oh. Why? Why? I think I got another one that I can use. Let me see. Do I have another? Oh, I have a... Uh, I'll try this one. It's an acrylic ink, but... I think this one's had its day. You can use all kinds of inks with your dip pen. Just have to make sure you uh, clean your nib with this one, though. It's going to work. Yep. Okay. Here's our bunny. Oh, no, please. Hmm. Oh, that's frustrating. Don't think it's the pen. It's probably the user. <laughs> it's a new nib. I don't know. It's a little, another thing you gotta watch out but it happens little ears Might have to just get a white marker out or something. That sucks. Big time. Yeah, we just have a little little bunny. Yeah, just like it. I 
Or maybe it's the paper. That could be too. Or the paint that's on this. I think this might be one of the um, Akua inks prints. But I wouldn't think it would wreck your the way your pen works, but I could be wrong. Uh, there's okay. Oh, that's so frustrating. Well, I'm not going to be playing with that on stream because it's going to drive you guys bonkers. So let's get out a white marker. It's a graphic. I think it might be the the uh, ink on the page here. It's slick. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Doesn't want to write on this. Well, what else could we use? It's that ink, that's ink also. So, Posca. Or not Posca. Um, Sharpie. A white bunny. I'll just do a little bit on his ear so he's at least you can see him. And then just a few flowers. I don't think this paper or this Akua ink is great when you're wanting to do uh, fine detail work with uh, dip pens or ink. This is a shame, but again, that's how you learn, right? Let's just do a few. You kind of see some of these uh, dots here as centers. So I'm just putting some of those uh, petals, dried petals in there. You can change it up however. You don't have to stick to uh, what was there. If you see something else, put it in. That's the fun of it. I'm 
maybe a few in here. I like uh, just putting a few in. I don't like doing all of them. So I find it uh, can get too busy also. But that's a preference thing too. Uh, you may like a lot of color or a lot of uh, texture in yours. So you just have to experiment. This is a great way to experiment because a lot of these would probably be sitting in your drawer for years <laughs> like mine and if you don't use them what's you know why use up that paint and and um, paper if you're not going to do anything with them that's why I like to find ways of learning and experimenting with things so grow as an artist doesn't matter how advanced you are in art there's always room to grow and this is a great way to get confidence in your drawing abilities or just imagination even just have to enjoy it play and and know that you're gonna have some fails on it but they're fun and don't take them so hard enjoy while you're doing it and if it fails laugh <laughs> some of them are really funny looking you kind of go what the heck was I thinking or you know oh boy won't do that again but you learned hey there's that little bunny that Tori saw thanks Tori that's a cute one and what else do we got uh, do we see anything in the background here You can paint on these too. Uh, I'm not going to sweat over finding something either. If I, oh, here's a cool one. Okay, this one reminds me of a bird. So you could take your pen. Now this is acrylic ink, so I probably should use a marker, acrylic marker for this one, if I can find my black. This acrylic with uh, your markers, your good markers, you will wreck your marker. Oh, I don't know if I have one of I had all kinds of them and do you think I can find one? I don't know where I put them all. It's crazy. Uh, what other? I think I put it in here. Because nope. pencil's not going to go on this because it's acrylic artist grade. Um, Yes, I could do the black again. We'll see. Hopefully. Let's see if this works. Okay. So 
So I see a bird. And He's kind of a <laughs> bird with attitude, with shrubs across his eyes. These are so cool. <laughs> I know. I, you gotta try this, Lori. They're fun. Okay, so um, let's see. We want big eyes. So. that usually the bird's eyes have a little well their eyelid basically try to get them the same size give them a little bit of a <laughs> what's he saying he's saying i thought it was spring did i come too early <laughs> Maybe he's got, let's see. A little fuzz happening. He's puffed up because he's too darn cold. He's thinking he maybe better not come back next year. It's too cold here for him. No worms out. Yeah, speckled tummy. It's going to fuzzy on the bottom. Um, let's see, we'll put some a 
little toes on here. Poor guy, he's frozen. There's little feet. There's a few little fuzzies out the side. A little more on the top there. Darker in here. There, I think he's cute. <laughs> yeah, he's funny. Poor guy. Feel sorry for him. Um, they do have a little nose. I can hear my <laughs> so you never know what your splatters are going to give you. <laughs> That's cute. He's sparkly. <laughs> well, there's these two. These, the... They're very, very light. So these would be really cool um, if you have a sepia color. That would be cool. And just shadow certain areas just to bring out some of the uh, textures that are in there. Sometimes it's, it's just about um, bringing things out. Let's try it with, it's kind of hard to do because it's shiny. Um, but Sometimes it's just about enhancing.
And this too will help you with drawing. Um, these are actual prints from a plant. So you're getting the true shapes and uh, forms of the, of the leaves and, and the veining and It's fun just to play with stuff like this to see what what else can you do with it. Sometimes it doesn't need a lot too. And this is how I know a lot of uh, people ask me, you know, how do you know when to um, use ink in your watercolor? So this will help you because I'm just following the shadows. So sometimes real stuff like this, that's an actual print from a plant, kind of helps you. Or you could do reverse um, painting in there. That would be cool too. And it all depends on how, how intricate you want to get. You, maybe you'll just do certain types of leaves and leave the rest or uh, bring in white to do some of it. So sometimes it's not about finding stuff, what you see in the shapes. Sometimes it's just about enhancing it. So you could treat this like a watercolor and uh, learn. By how to uh, do your line work. It's actually very relaxing to do something like this, especially because you're not looking for anything. It's there for you already. I was just thinking I had to look for objects like the idea of just enhancing what's there. That looks amazing. Yeah. Enhance stuff and it doesn't have to be just with pen. You could um, get out your, depending on what you've used, of course, but you could take out your um, paint again and do a light uh, glazing in areas. Uh, another thing that would wor work with this probably would be your uh, pit markers because you can move those. You might want to try that. That'd be kind of cool. But just experiment. Now, uh, a lot of the uh, reverse coloring book pages are kind of um, a lot more like this. 
uh, maybe splatters or stuff like that. So um, in that way, you kind of have to find stuff. But that can be fun too. And you don't have to do the whole thing. You could just do uh, bits of it. Maybe you just want one area um, brought out. If you're doing it in uh, watercolor, like your backgrounds were in watercolor, then you can get your colored pencils out and really uh, do some fantastic uh, detailing and it's just fun. Maybe I'll just do this leaf, this leaf, and this here, and then that'll be it. So whatever's in between the leaves from there to here, that's all that I'll do. I think that looks cool. So I know that this is uh, wood. Very relaxing. A little bit more, and then I'll be done. Let's see. It's just uh, sketching over top of an already existing uh, print. And then you could uh, do some writing on it. You could have it done. You could use these for books too. Like that book I made, you could, that had the um, double folds, you could glue a bunch of these together and make a book out of these and then just use it as a, a doodling book or you could use your dip pen and write a bunch of quotes in it or whatever. So I think that would be cool as uh, or even um, if you're one that likes to write about your day, that would be also a nice way of filling instead of just a composition book. Use up your gel prints. Get some inks, the pens or um, Poscas, depending on what you've used. And then you can use these up instead of having them sitting in your drawer. So it could be a, just a book like that. So there's your little thing. And then you can write all in here in black or draw more, whatever. But I think that's a cool way of um, using up your prints. So I guess I should go. That's all I have for now. So I hope you liked what we played with.
so we got let's see the little bird we have a little bunny now this was a kua ink so it was a little more difficult to put um, dip pen on a little uh, underwater scene No, we didn't do anything with that. Um, that was the first one we did. So just doodling on the negative areas. Here was a little fairy I spotted in the background. We just did a quick sketch. So you never know what you're going to find. So I hope you'll get out all those jelly prints and uh, have some fun with them. Make up a, a booklet or whatever and uh, use those jelly prints up. So they're, they're no good sitting in your box. <laughs> I'm going to use mine up. And if you're still interested in um, having me uh, download a bunch of them for you, let me know. And... Um, have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you next week. All right? Have a good one, everyone.